Okay, you guys, so the custom fleece that I got from Esty with the ferrets driving like motorcycles and trucks and cars, um, I decided to use that to make a set of cage liners. So with two yards of that fabric and two yards of a solid color, I was able to make an entire set of double critter ferret nation cage liners, a hammock that's about 16 inches and a pet cuddle cup for a ferret. So it's a little bit bigger than the cuddle cup for guinea pigs. So um, without further ado, let's check out these awesome cage liners. I'm so excited, it's so cute. Okay, so here we go. Here is the top. Um, here is the fabric. It looks like this. It's absolutely the cutest fabric I've ever seen in my life. It's so cute. I love it. Um, here is the cuddle cup that I made. This is really padded, so they'll probably really love this. Here is the hammock that I made. Um, there's the, obviously the top liner. And then I don't keep a ramp up here because they can climb up here without any issue. So if you come down here, we have the ramp cover. There's a ramp here. Um, I normally put litter boxes right here because they didn't always have free range. So when I take the litter boxes out of here, they're so used to them being in here, they poop on the liner. So I have to kind of leave the litter boxes because they're just really used to having them there. Um, so they really just eat and poop down here and they don't really do anything here anymore because they're free range they, they sleep at the top a lot. So here is the liners. I am absolutely in love with them and I want to buy more different fabric. I want to buy the girl one so I can make pink for the girls. So just to give you an idea of all the different um, designs that are on the fabric, I'm going to do it this way because the little shelf doesn't have them all I don't think. So they're so cute. They're basically, this is, I think this is, I'll get the title of this fabric. It was, it's adorable. It's expensive. It's like really expensive. And this fleece is, um, it's from Spoonflower and it's not like really thick. It's actually kind of thin. So it, and it doesn't feel like a normal fleece, but it's super uber, uber soft. So, um, I don't know. It's great. I am so excited and I have not made them. So I haven't made cage liners for my ferrets in a really long time because they have so many cage liners, but I, they haven't had a brand new set from top to bottom in a long time. So, so I, I went and I threw this together in like two seconds. It's not the greatest blanket ever, but it's just a little, um, like a throw blanket. It's fleece and flannel and it's bordered with this. Um, I just had a, some scraps left. They really love blankets. They love to sleep under blankets. So yeah, that's what we got. So for this project, you're gonna need your sewing machine, a pair of scissors, a ruler, and some pins. Um, you're also gonna need some kind of batting or polyfill batting. You're gonna to want to cut out a circle. Mine's about 16 inches, and then batting to go on the back. So one 16 inch circle, then you're gonna cut a circle that's a little bit bigger, also with batting. This is gonna be your bottom, this will be your top. You're gonna want one strip of fabric that's about five inches, um, and I'm not sure how long this measures. I'll let you guys know at the end. And the strips of padding at the at bottom. And then you're gonna want one that's a little bit longer. So another strip with the batting at the end. And now we're gonna go and we're gonna stitch the batting to each piece. Okay, so now that you've sewn on the batting to everything, you're gonna go to the sewing machine and you're gonna take the smaller one for this one and the bigger one for this one. And basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the fleeces right side together like this. Actually, you're not gonna, you're gonna wanna start like on an end. And you're gonna sew this all the way around. You're gonna do the same thing for this one.
So now you've sewn the strips around your bed. You have this weird opening. So what you want to do is you just want to line the opening up like this. So just like this. And you're going to sew just right down this line. And you're going to do the same thing on the other beds. Now that you've done that on both here, you're just going to um, lay these flat like this. And then you want to stitch this part closed. So you're going to stitch this closed on both of these. Okay, so now you have your small, <clears throat> the smaller one and the larger one. And you're going to want to take your smaller one and you're going to want to flip it right side out. So it should look like this. Now, find your seams on both. Stick your smaller one inside of the larger one. And make sure that you line your seams up. So, um... We're going to sew this together now. So you're going to sew the whole entire top. Don't leave an opening. Sew the whole top together. I would remove your tray. Okay. Now you should have an inside out cup, basically. So here's what we're going to want to do. You're going to want, you need to now cut, a, or actually, well, you have to cut it to be able to flip it inside out. I'm going to cut a little spot. You can cut it however you want, whatever shape that you want. Basically, it's going to be the entrance, how your babies are going to get in. So, we're just going to go like this. See if that looks pretty. I think it's steeper on this side. And you are going to now put your hand in between. You're going to pull it right side out. So now you have this giant mess. So what you have to do is you have to create your, you have to kind of play with it. Um, you have to <laughs> get your walls together. So now you have your cup. So now what about this, you say? So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to roll these in. Now you can hand sew this if you want to. Or you can sew it with the sewing machine. It's up to you. Um, if, if you don't want to see the thread lines, if you don't want to see your thread lines, then you're going to want to stitch this by hand. If you don't care about the thread lines, then you can stitch it with your sewing machine. Okay. So I decided I'm going to stitch it closed with a needle so it looks pretty. So to do that, you're going to get your needle and thread. You want to go up underneath here. Now you want to sew, you want to kind of grab just the outside of the fabric. So you want to grab here. And then you want to go directly across from that spot.
And you want to do the same thing again. And I'll put a link to my ladder stitch video, so 